Have you ever looked at the grandeur of the pyramids of Egypt and thought, what if they were more than just royal tombs? What if these ancient structures were actually power plants harnessing unseen forces? Imagine the pyramids not just as final resting places for the pharaohs, but as colossal energy generators of a lost civilization. Buckle up, because today we're going on an electrifying journey exploring some fascinating theories about these ancient wonders. We're delving into the engineering marvels, piezoelectricity, and even the possibility that the pyramids predate the Egyptians. To fully grasp the awe-inspiring genius behind the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza, we must understand its sheer magnitude. Standing tall at 481 feet originally, this pyramid was the tallest man-made structure on Earth for almost 4,000 years. Its colossal size isn't the only feature that impresses, though. The accuracy with which it was built is mind-boggling. For instance, the base of the pyramid is a nearly perfect square, with sides measuring about 230.4 meters each. The sides are aligned almost exactly with the cardinal points of the compass, deviating by less than 0.06 degrees from true north. This kind of precision would be a challenging feat, even with our modern construction technology, let alone with the tools and methods available over 4,000 years ago. The interior design is no less impressive. The Grand Gallery, the King's Chamber, the Queen's Chamber, and the mysterious subterranean chamber are all part of a complex internal system. These elements, combined with the intricately designed ventilation shafts, showcase the extraordinary knowledge and skill of the architects who conceived this masterpiece. The more we learn about the Great Pyramid, the more we realize just how much of an engineering marvel it is. And that's just the start of the mysteries this ancient edifice holds for us. When we consider the Great Pyramid, many among us can't help but wonder, could there be more to its purpose than a mere tomb? Enter the electrifying theory of pyramids as power plants. This idea, while certainly not mainstream, has ignited the imaginations of many independent researchers and thinkers. Some advocates of this theory point to the design and construction of the pyramid, specifically its use of granite. Granite is known to contain quartz crystals, which can generate an electrical charge under pressure, a phenomenon known as piezoelectricity. The king's chamber, lined with granite, could potentially have generated this form of electricity. Another piece of evidence cited is the mysterious tunnels leading into and out of the king's chamber. These shafts, some argue, could have been used to channel some form of energy. The fact that these tunnels align with certain star constellations adds further intrigue to these theories. Additionally, the location of the pyramid itself is noteworthy. The Great Pyramid is located at the geographical center of Earth's landmass. Could this be a mere coincidence, or was it intentionally built here due to some special geoelectric properties of this location? To fully grasp the theory of the Great Pyramid as a power plant, one must first understand its unique internal design, the precision with which the pyramid was constructed, the particular materials used, and the placement of different chambers and corridors all contribute to the hypothesis. Let's begin with the king's chamber. This room is made entirely of granite, which, as we discussed before, has a significant quartz content. Quartz is known to produce an electric charge under pressure, a phenomenon known as piezoelectricity. This has led some to believe that the pyramid may have been designed to generate and store energy. Then we have the grand gallery, a 47 meters long, 8 meters high corridor that leads directly to the king's chamber. It's suggested by some theorists that the gallery could act as a resonance chamber, potentially amplifying and focusing any energy generated within the king's chamber. Below the king's chamber and the grand gallery, there's the so-called queen's chamber, and further down still, the subterranean chamber. The latter is an unfinished rough-hewn room cut into the bedrock beneath the pyramid. The purpose of these rooms is still shrouded in mystery, and some believe they were integral to the supposed energy production of the pyramid. Connecting the outside world to these internal chambers are four narrow shafts, two from the king's chamber and two from the queen's chamber. While their precise function remains unknown, some researchers speculate they might have acted as conduits for the energy generated inside the pyramid. Finally, the Great Pyramid's external layer was originally covered in white limestone, forming a smooth outer surface. The properties of this limestone are noteworthy. It is an excellent insulator, capable of preserving the internal temperature of the pyramid, 
but it also conducts electricity well, which adds another fascinating angle to the power plant theory. All these details and architectural features have led some theorists to imagine the Great Pyramid as a complex energy system rather than a simple tomb. This energy, they propose, could have been harnessed for various purposes, from communication to healing to powering advanced technologies. It's a theory that continues to spark imagination. It's clear the pyramid's construction methods were highly sophisticated, and their architects were familiar with some fascinating natural phenomena. Piezoelectricity and the potential of hydrogen power offer interesting insights into the theory of pyramids as ancient power plants. Let's dive deeper into this intriguing aspect of the theory. Piezoelectricity is a property of certain materials, including quartz, to generate an electric charge in response to mechanical stress. And it just so happens that granite, the material used to build the king's chamber and many internal passages of the Great Pyramid, contains a substantial amount of quartz. If the builders intentionally chose these materials to harness piezoelectricity, it would be evidence of an advanced understanding of physics. Uh, but how would mechanical stress have been applied to the granite? Some theorists speculate that the pyramids might have been intentionally designed to vibrate, possibly through the impact of seismic waves or sound reverberations. This vibration would stress the quartz in the granite, generating electricity. If this electricity could then be captured and directed, it could form a power source. Moving on to hydrogen, theorists have proposed that the so-called Queen's Chamber was designed as a hydrogen generator. The idea is based on the mysterious shafts leading into the chamber. According to the theory, one shaft could have supplied the chamber with hydrated zinc and the other with dilute hydrochloric acid. When these two substances mix, they generate hydrogen gas. Could this have been the pyramid's primary source of power? The potential power of hydrogen is well known today. Hydrogen fuel cells are a clean energy technology that's gaining traction. The idea that the ancients might have harnessed the energy potential of hydrogen is tantalizing. Though, of course, it's also highly speculative. This exploration of the Great Pyramid's internal design, the possible piezoelectric effects of its construction materials, and the potential generation of hydrogen within its chambers opens up new possibilities for interpreting this ancient wonder. Whether or not you subscribe to the power plant theory, it's certainly a fascinating angle to consider. We continue to excavate layers upon layers of history. There's a profound question that continues to baffle archaeologists, historians and researchers alike. Are the pyramids older than the civilization we credit them to? Some propose the idea of pre-dynastic Egypt, a period before the official start of pharaonic civilization, during which these magnificent structures might have been built. They cite evidence of water erosion on the Sphinx and certain pyramids, suggesting that these structures were subjected to heavy rainfall, a climate condition that hasn't been a part of Egypt's landscape for at least 8,000 years, predating the recognized start of Egyptian civilization. This leads us to an intriguing theory. Did the ancient Egyptians merely inherit these colossal structures? This idea, often referred to as the moved-in theory, posits that the ancient Egyptians found these abandoned architectural marvels and decided to make them a part of their civilization. Proponents of this theory cite the stark contrast between the complex, massive pyramids and the simpler, smaller structures Egyptians were known to build elsewhere during the same period. They also note the absence of conclusive evidence directly linking the pharaohs to the construction of these pyramids, such as contemporary inscriptions, drawings, or definitive proof within the structures themselves. But in the realm of exploration, we must keep our minds open to new possibilities. Seeking truth with skepticism, curiosity, and relentless inquiry. The sands of Egypt still have countless stories buried within them, waiting to be discovered, decoded, and understood. Our journey now takes us to a theory that combines ancient legends, archaeological anomalies, and a sprinkle of speculative thinking. According to some theorists, the pyramids could be remnants of a prehistoric era, predating even the earliest Egyptian dynasties. This theory suggests that the pyramids might have served as a sort of ark, preserving the knowledge of a highly advanced civilization that was wiped out by a cataclysmic flood. We've all heard about the Great Deluge, a massive flood that supposedly wiped out an entire civilization. 
This story isn't exclusive to any one culture or region. Flood myths are recorded in the lore of numerous civilizations around the world, from the biblical tale of Noah to the ancient Sumerian epic of Gilgamesh. Some propose that this great flood, whenever it may have occurred, destroyed an advanced civilization which had built the pyramids. These survivors, they speculate, could have passed on their knowledge to the Egyptians, who then moved in to the pre-existing pyramids. Interestingly, the pyramids, particularly the Great Pyramid of Giza, show signs of significant water erosion, suggesting they were once partially submerged. Could this be evidence of a catastrophic flood? And there's another intriguing element to consider. The pyramids are thought to be designed with exceptional precision, aligned with celestial bodies, and potentially serving as a form of star map. Some suggest this was a way of preserving the lost civilization's astronomical knowledge. But as we continue to peel back the layers of history, we remain open to new discoveries, fresh perspectives and intriguing possibilities. After all, the quest for knowledge is never-ending, and as always, thanks for watching.